Chapter 5, The Proving The clock struck six. It was Christmas morning. Jimsy awoke with the thought of turkey uppermost in his mind. To find Aunt Judith by his bed, a wonderful look of Christmas, he thought, in her gentle face. Dress quickly, Jimsy, she whispered, and don't make a sound. Not a sound. I'll wait outside by the door. It's, it's a Christmas secret that nobody but you and I must know. Jimsy tumbled into his clothes and opened the door. What is it, Aunt Judith? he whispered. But for answer, Aunt Judith only hurried him in a flutter to the sewing room. Safe this many a year from the measured thread of first citizen feet and closed the door. Oh, Aunt Judith, gulped the boy. Aunt Judith! A Christmas tree winked in rainbowed glory in a window by the eaves, everything beneath its tinseled branches that the heart of a boy could wish. The radiance in Jimsy's eyes brought Aunt Judith to her knees beside him, her sweet, tired eyes wet with tears of pleasure. You like it, Jimsy, she whispered. You're sure you like it, dear? Jimsy buried his face on Aunt Judith's shoulder and a strangled sob of excitement and delight. Aunt Judith, he blurted, I, I can't most tell you what I think. Aunt Judith's arms clung tightly to him. Cousin Lemuel helped me, she whispered. The house was dark and Mr. Sawyer in bed. There wasn't even a light in the workshop. We tiptoed up and down the back stairs. You mustn't breathe a word of it, Jimsy, not a word. It's for you and me. Jimsy sighed. Wished, he said, wished Uncle Abe believed in Christmas. Aunt Judith kissed him. Bless your heart, Jimsy, she said bravely. So do I. But even bewildering hours with gifts and trees must come to an end, and presently Aunt Judith and Jimsy went down hand in hand to attend to the fire and breakfast. And the opening of the sitting room door froze Aunt Judith Sawyer to the threshold, her face whitely unbelieving. Something was wrong with the primness of the setting, sitting room. Something in evergreen and tinsel and a hundred candles that showered Christmas from its bow. Something was wrong with Abner Sawyer up and waiting by the window, his face twisted into a faint and sickly smile of apology. For now that he was in the very heart of his proving, he did not know what on earth to do. Dignity, it was hopelessly out of the question. With a monument to his midnight guilt blazing there in the corner, with, with Christmas wreaths hung in the window to confound the Middletons, he must face the music. Feeling very foolish, he cleared his throat and essayed to speak paralyzed into silence again by the unexpected evolution of a hoarse croak so horribly unfirst citizen that it frightened him. Jimsy broke the staring silence. Uncle Abe quivered, you never, you never went and done all that for me. I, I don't know, said Abner Sawyer, swallowing hard. I, I think I did. When, faltered Aunt Judith in the doorway, did you do it? It must have been after midnight. I came in very quietly. The ride was long. I went to Mattsville. You must have been in bed asleep. Jimsy embarked upon a handspring of celebration. Two trees, he shouted. Caution quite forgotten his wild excitement. Two suits of clothes, two everything. Oh my gosh, specs ain't in it. I'm the Christmas kid. And then in a panic, he was on his feet again his face hot and red. Aunt Judith, he exclaimed, almost crying, I'm awfully sorry. Aunt Judith's tremulous laugh seemed tears and silver. Never mind, dear, it's all right now, Abner. She swallowed bravely. One of, one of Jimsy's Christmas trees is in the sewing room. I'd, I'd like you to see it.